Hello, Blake Rudis here with F64 Academy and F64 Elite, and today I'm going to show you something really cool. I'm going to show you how to use the Vivid Light Blend Mode to make a beautiful color grade on any photograph. But I know what you're thinking. The Vivid Light Blend Mode? Yes. Most people throw the Vivid Light Blend Mode away because when they first put it on their image, it looks like this. And depending on the color that you use, it can look even worse. So it's like, ah, ah throw it away. But here's the deal. When you know how to use this blend mode and this one special slider that it works with can transform an ordinary image into something that's beautifully and subtly color graded. Let's go ahead and hop into Photoshop and I'll show you exactly how to do this. So I recently produced this course called Photoshop Foundations Blend Modes over on F64 Elite. I'll go ahead and leave a link here on YouTube in the description. And you also find it in the card. If you're on F64 Academy, you'll find a link for it on F64 Academy. So uh, with this course, I basically dug really deep into all the blend modes. Now, I know what happens when you start using Photoshop. You find one or two blend modes that work. And the reason why is because they work so easily. You, you use them and it's like, oh, look at that. It made my photo better. And those are things like screen, multiply, soft light, and even things like the color blend mode. But there are a bunch of blend modes in Photoshop that are absolutely incredible, especially for color grading. And I'm gonna show you one of those today, and that's the Vivid Light Blend Mode. Now, the Vivid Light Blend Mode is interesting for two reasons. It actually takes the properties of two other blend modes in our blend mode list. It takes color burn and color dodge and combines them into one blend mode. The other crazy thing about the Vivid Light Blend Mode is that it's not controlled by opacity very well. It's really controlled by fill. And if you're not using fill with it, just go ahead and throw it away. It's a wash, okay? It's crap. So this image is an image that is a really great photo to use for this actually because it could use a little bit of color to uh, set the mood. So when I'm color grading my images, I'm usually thinking to myself, okay, what do I want the viewer to feel when they see this photo? So I'll get it to a point where I like it and then I start the color grading process. So in order to do that, I usually go down to my adjustment layers and put a solid color overlay on it and I just press okay. I'm gonna go with magenta because I, I love it. It's an offensive color. I love offensive colors. <laughs> and it also turns my face magenta on the video. Uh, but I'm gonna drop the blending mode down here to vivid light. And the reason why you probably never use this is because if you're using the full saturation of a color and you change it to vivid light, it's gonna look like nothing's happening. Because what it's doing is it's adding contrast both, both to the light areas and the dark areas by burning and dodging. Well, if you use the highest saturation of a color, the calculation that's happening with the Vivid Light Blend Mode will do nothing because of how the inner workings of it go, okay? There's geniuses out there that could probably explain it better than I could. But I know, based on results, that if I go over to Fill and I drop this Fill Blend Mode, watch what happens. I start to see my image underneath with a color overlay on top of it. And what's happening is I'm seeing that magenta applying itself to the light areas and the dark areas. And as I make this less on the fill side, it starts to look like a really nice color grade. If I bring this up, that's 20%, keep that in mind. If I bring this opacity up and drop that to 20%, it just looks like someone just spilled uh, magenta on my image and tried to recover it with a, toe, with a piece of paper towel or something like that and didn't do a very good job and just smeared color all over my image. Whereas if I bring this opacity back to 100 and drop that fill down to 20%, I'm getting a rich intensity of color added to my dark areas and my light areas. Because what's it doing? Well, if we understand the nature of dodging and burning, it's making the brights brighter and the darks darker, but it's doing that with a color fill at the exact same time. So if we were to change this blend mode to something like color burn, you could see that that's doing something similar. It's adding intensity to the photo with color. The difference here is that when we go to vivid light, it's not only using color burn, it's using color burn and color dodge. So it's kind of the union of the two and where they overlap, you start to see a little bit more color coming through with vivid light than you would with color burn or color dodge. Now this is set to the highest saturation of the color magenta. And one of the reasons why I like using solid color fills is I can just double click inside this solid color fill adjustment layer and I can change it to any color I want to start to get the mood and feel I want. I mean, this is like Gotham City right here, whereas this is more like, I don't know, uh, more, feels more like something really bad is gonna happen. Very, uh, the anxiety that's coming through with red. But we can make it more of a calming feel too, where this street doesn't maybe look as bad by making it blue. So I'm altering the mood of the image just by using the color grade that I've chosen. Now with this set to the highest saturation of the color magenta, a lot of magenta is coming through and it's really kind of bad actually. But if I bring this down to somewhere like right here, now there's a neutral thing that's happening here. I'm getting a little bit of color 
I'm getting more dodge and more burn happening and less color being added. So we have three things that can basically assess the color grade that we're going to get from the vivid light blend mode. We either have the fill, the opacity, or the actual color that we use for the vivid light blend mode. With this set to more of a neutral magenta, if I were to bring up the fill, that's where we start to see more color cast and a little bit more of that burning happening or the increase in intensity and contrast happening in the darker areas. If I double click this now, I've got a good color set here. If you really want to get a good one set, you can just change this to 64 and then this to 128 and then this to 128 and that will ensure you're like right dead center in the middle there. Okay. And then from here, since we already have a color dead set in the middle, here's where we can start adding more different colors to this image and getting a whole different mood and feel for this photograph. And any, any, any color will really work here. There's no wrong color for this. Every color really kind of looks good for this. But one thing I have to tell you with this vivid light blend mode is if you have an image that's already got a lot of contrast in it, and then you bring the vivid light blend mode in there, it's going to add too much contrast. A perfect example of that is this image right down here. When I open up this image, if I were to grab this vivid light color fill here, click and hold it, drag it and drop it and press shift. You can see that it adds an insane amount of contrast to the dark areas and it doesn't look so good. I can offset that by double clicking on this color and maybe going more towards a brighter color, but then it defeats the purpose of using the vivid light blend mode altogether. So if you have an image that already has a lot of contrast, meaning very deep pits of black and very bright areas, the vivid light blend mode probably won't work out very well for you. But if you've got an image like this, which has a lot of neutral colors and neutral tones in it, it works great for pulling together that color grade. So you might be asking, well, does this even work on portraits? Well, of course it does. Let's go ahead and open up this Adobe stock image that we have here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do the typical solid color fill. Yes, we're going to set it to magenta and press OK. From here, we're going to change this to the vivid light blend mode and then drop the fill down and watch how what happens as we slowly drop this fill down. And now I always default and go to magenta. You can go to whatever color you want. The reason why I use magenta is it's a color that typically doesn't happen in our images. So it lets me see exactly how it's applying to the photo a lot better. Now, if I chose something like blue for this, there could be blue in the sky. There could be blue somewhere else already. And it doesn't really show me the true intensity of what happens to the colors that are happening and coming through with vivid light. That's why I use magenta. Typically, if you see any of my videos, I'm using magenta a lot for anything that I want to see what's going to happen. It's, it's a good color to use for those effects. So I'll drop this fill a little bit more about right here to about 15%. Typically, if you're the type of person who sees patterns, a go to is a solid color fill with the fill of about 15%. And that's good to go for vivid life. So now if I double click on this though, I can change this to any color I want to start getting the color grade that I want for this photograph. If I use a blue color, it's cold. If I use more of an orange or yellow color, it's more inviting, or maybe I want to choose a color from inside this image. So maybe I'll just grab maybe one of the purples that's on her shirt. So now I've color graded this from a color that's in her shirt and that makes that shirt a lot more intense. If I were to double click on this color, maybe color grade it to the color of her eye, that's going to make the colors of her eye a little bit more intense or her eyes more intense and draw more attention to the eyes. I'll press cancel on that because I actually kind of like the way this looked when that was vivid light set to that magenta color. Now, don't just disregard the fact that you still have opacity, masks, and blend if. So at any time, if you're working with this, and you're like, I kind of like what's going on here, but it's doing too much to my dark areas. Just double click on this color fill, which will open up our blend if principles. If I move this over to the right, it will go ahead and start reducing that effect in those dark areas. I can press alt or option and split it and feather it. And that's basically saying, Hey, Blake, protect the underlying layers, shadowy areas from this color fill that you have here and press. Okay. So now when we look at this, it doesn't quite hit those dark areas quite as much, but it does put a nice color fill on our overall image. With the mask, if I will go ahead and press B for my brush tool, make that brush a lot smaller and go ahead and brush with black on this mask, I can start recovering the colors of her eyes because that magenta color, that purple color that I'm using by default, because it is uh, the complementary color to green, it's going to reduce the color of her green eyes. So here we increase the intensity of the magenta in the image while maintaining her beautiful green eyes and also reduce the effect that's happening inside the shadow areas. The next thing I can do is drop the opacity here and take a look at that. 
a nice smooth, subtle color grade that ties the whole image together. If I double click on the color, I can change that color to anything I want. I've got a good solid color set here. So if I change this to hue and move this down, Look at that, I can even add some blue, or maybe some cyan, or green, or yellow, or even some orange there to increase the intensity of her skin tones. Look at that. The Vivid Light Blend Mode, a blend mode that a lot of people would just say, throw it away, it's crap, it's junk. It's not. It uses the color dodge and color burn blend modes from the darken and lighten categories of your blend modes. And as it does that, it adds a color to your image. If you use something like a solid color fill, you can get a very literal color grade that also has a very nice subtle undertone to it that nobody would know. Now I've just shown you a bunch of tips on one blend mode here, and that's the Vivid Light Blend Mode. In the Photoshop Foundations Blend Mode course, I, go, I cover all 27 blend modes in great detail and also bring light to some of the relationships that happen between other blend modes, like Overlay, which is a combination of Screen and Multiply. It's a very comprehensive course that covers everything you need to know about blend modes. If you like this video, please comment on it, share it, like it, tell a friend, and subscribe. And when you subscribe, click that little uh, ding, the little bell, so that when I make a new video, you get notifications. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video. I sincerely appreciate it.